What up, what up, New York here. Listen, if you're one of the two billion people on YouTube that never heard of Jay Williams, go give him a listen. He's a prison genre YouTuber. You'll probably watch like 15 seconds and be like, how the fuck did that guy get on YouTube? But anyways, go check him out. Don't subscribe and then come back and watch his video. But for the 300,000 that do watch Jay's videos, I've been trying to warn you guys. For all those who go to the Church of Latter-day Saints, I've been trying to warn you. I've been trying to tell you that if you let an ex-convict or an ex-criminal's ego go unchecked for so long, it could lead to horrible things. It could lead to catastrophes. If you keep feeding Jay's ego, it's going to turn him into the most horrible, disgusting, condescending, narcissistic, human piece of shit that you can ever imagine. It will take a normal man and turn him into this person that every time you watch him, you're just hoping that his head will fucking explode like a fucking cartoon and splat all over the screen. That's literally the only reason you watch the videos. If you keep blowing smoke at this man, it could turn him into the worst human being, the worst thing since herpes for men. It could turn him into Wes motherfucking Watson. One thing I noticed is there's different levels to becoming an egocentric piece of shit YouTuber who has a godlike status among his few fans who actually call him a celebrity. It doesn't happen all at once, but it fucking happens over time. While you all think he's telling you real life true stories, this guy's just trying to line his fucking pockets so he can buy more drugs. And I know what you're saying. Wes Watson don't look like he's on drugs. Steroids are a fucking drug. The honest truth about everything is, Wes Watson probably shoots more needles in his arm than Spencer from the Dope Sick Show. The only difference is, Spencer's falling apart and melting into nothing and sounds like a fucking retard. And Wes Watson got his nuts shriveled up into little fucking pieces of corn while he grows nuts on his chin and hair in places that he never even thought he would. As his fucking head goes bald and boils the size of golf balls start appearing on his motherfucking back. What's wrong with growing fucking nuts on your chin? At least I don't have a beard to cover them up. And it didn't come from years of shooting steroids. At least the nuts in my pants are the same size, if not bigger than the ones on my chin, Wes. Sorry, chin nuts. All right, I agree with you. Your nuts on your chin are probably better looking than the ones that motherfucker Wes Watson grew from shooting so much goddamn steroids. And at least, unlike him, you didn't grow a beard to cover them. Now that I did the math, let me explain to you the different levels of becoming a prison YouTuber. 500 subs or under. I don't want to talk about prison anymore. I'm going to start a prison YouTube channel where I talk about how I changed, where I try to motivate people to change as well. I want to put that prison life behind me and I want people to see the real me. 1,000 subs. I can get paid from this prison YouTube shit, but I only have like five real life prison stories. I guess I can order that Mad Libs prison edition and just start filling in different names and dates and start lying to these motherfucking people because if every fucking prison video is going to get me a check, I'm in. Screw morals. 20,000 subs. God damn it. I got enough money to get high again. I guess I deserve it. I'm the one putting in all this motherfucking work. You know, I told that story about Johnny getting his finger cut off. It worked out pretty well. I bet you if I make up a story of Johnny getting a plunger shoved in his ass while somebody cuts his ear off with a plastic spork, I bet you that can get me 30,000 views. They'll believe it. 100,000 subs. Fuck it. I can tell these people that I piss orange juice and shit golf balls and they'll fucking believe it. I think I'm going to start screwing with these people and tell them how to live their fucking life. That would be fucking hysterical, these morons. They'll believe anything I say. I bet even some of them will start looking up to me like I'm their father or a hero or somebody to look up to. I'm in. 300,000 subs. I am now a god. Do not question my lies. Kneel before me, sheep, and smell my queef. I shall tell you stories about how I am bulletproof and have a 46-inch penis. You shall ask to suck it on a daily basis. 
I will send my people out to harass the naysayers until they stop naysaying. While they're out doing that, I will get high as a motherfucking kite while I keep on telling people to stay sober. I cannot be a drug addict because drug addicts do not have the money I have. You shall all go out and spread my gospel. I am now your life coach. Please give me a J-men. J-men. Then you get to a million subs and once again, motherfucking Wes Watson. Let's talk about Wes Watson and his amazing fucking stories. If you listen to every one of them, you'll notice he covers a lot of topics, most of them being... For me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I, an egomaniac. Fuck. Yup. Egocentric king of a motherfucking mountain. Only talks about himself. Now let's talk about how he talks about himself. He tells his prison stories. He says he went to jail for 10 years, to prison for 10 years. No, he didn't. That's the first lie. It's been proven a hundred fucking times. The next one, he claims he's a shot caller for the woodpile. He tells stories, literally, about how he, when he got to every different prison, they would bring him to the guy who had the keys to the head shot caller and introduce him, literally, to the shot caller. Or, let me introduce you, this guy has the keys. This isn't how prison fucking works, folks. While you're in prison, they don't call him the shot caller. They don't say, hey, that guy, that's the guy who has the keys. And the guy who has the keys doesn't say, come to me. I have the keys. I am the prison shot caller. No, it's usually like big homie or something like that. This guy can't even get his fucking slang words right. He claims he was in a prison riot. Over 10 people who were in prison with him came around, got on YouTube, and let it be known that he was never in any type of prison riot at all. A matter of fact, he said he was in over 15 fights, probably even more, if you listen to all his stories. Somebody pulled his paperwork. It turns out he was in one fight. He got his ass kicked and they removed him from the unit. If I told you there's literally a video out there of this motherfucker, Wes Watson, saying that this is how you shower in prison. He says you go in the shower fully clothed. You take shampoo and you shampoo all your clothes, your socks, you sing shampoo at all. Yeah, shampoo your whole fucking clothes up. Then you take them off and then you wash yourself and you wring out your clothes that were just covered in shampoo and you go hang them to dry. I never went to prison in California, nor do I know the situation. But if anybody's been to prison in California, tell me if that's the truth. Because that's just some weirdo shit. I cannot see any man walking into the shower, taking shampoo and lathering up his fucking clothes. It's such bullshit that it makes you wonder if he ever even took a shower, if he hid under his bed the whole time he was away. I know what you're thinking. New York, there's no way he said that. Oh, yeah? Enter with your socks on, your boxers on, your shirt on. And you water them down, you soap them up while they're on you. You take your socks off, you put them on your hands, you soap them up. You leave the shower with your clothes soaked up, rang out, and fucking ready to be hung up. I told you he said it. He really did say it. A matter of fact, the only real story I ever heard him tell, or at least I think it's real, would be this one right here. Because this is definitely the realest he's ever been. One day I come out my cell, and I see my south side partner it's jacking off and joking with him because I don't have no say on what he's doing. He ain't my people. And he's like, hey, hey, Wes. They got me on a hot one. I'm going back to court. I'm done. It's jacking off incessantly. With Wes Watson, this weirdo, talking to his cellmate or his fucking next door neighbor about jerking off is one of the few prison stories he told that I actually believe. Now, you would think when a guy like this lies this much, he would at least have, you know, friends to back it up. I mean, all these other guys who've been in prison with him say he's a lying piece of shit, basically. Every one of them. I mean, there's hundreds of videos. Here's a fact. If you Google Wes Watson, the first thing that comes up is Wes, Wa Wes Watson scam artist. That's the very first thing. It's been Googled more than actually Wes Watson. But anyway, back to his friends. You would think this guy has a bunch of friends who went away with him, being he's a big old shot caller, who would vouch for all these stories, right? Well, he has an excuse for that, too. He's asked me, hey, Wes, why don't you bring your boys on the show? Why don't you bring fools you did time with on the show? They don't get out. None of them stay out for more than 20 minutes. 
Just like I said is going to happen to Jay. This guy's head is so fucking blown up that he thinks anything he tells you, you're going to buy it. You're expected to believe that a shot caller, every single friend or person he has met in prison that can vouch for any of his stories can't do so because they get locked up soon as they get out. Every one of them. Not one of them stayed out for 25 minutes. Not one of them can make a phone call from prison and get on his radio show. These guys must all be like Hannibal Lecter. Matter of fact, all his friends probably have charges for ripping people's heads off with their teeth and, you know, crazy stuff, cutting heads off and flushing body parts down the toilet. He had some badass friends. If he has friends that are so badass from being a fucking shot caller that they can't get on the phone and none of them ever get out of prison. This motherfucker, Wes Watson, however, did explode. Just like I told you, you keep feeding these guys and feeding these guys, their head gets so big and so big and so big. This motherfucker became an actual fucking life coach, a motivator of sorts. You can join his fucking club. It costs thousands of dollars. People like Dubs, you can go check him out too, have joined this club. Basically, if you're a low-life losing piece of shit, or if you fucking about two seconds away from jumping off a fucking bridge and deleting yourself, or if I don't even know what to say, maybe if you're living in a thumbtack under a fucking mattress in a dumpster somewhere, you might want to call Wes Watson. The problem is, you can't afford to. The only people that can afford this guy as a life coach are probably people who are way better off than him. But yet they try it anyway. They're like, oh man, this guy talks well. He must give good advice. After all, he guarantees, literally guarantees, this is a whole nother reason why he has over 2,000 complaints. And that's a fact. Well over 2,000 documented complaints about that guy. We'll get into that in a minute too. But yeah, these people call him. They're like, Wes, Wes, how could you help me? You want to know how he helps people? He helps people by telling them to fuck off. He made millions by helping people by insulting them. Think I'm lying again? Let me let you hear some of Wes Watson and what he thinks of you. This is directly him speaking about all his customers. This is him speaking about how he's a motivational coach, how he motivates people. It's a little long, but trust me, it will teach you who Wes Watson is. You shouldn't do. Fuck is the matter with you? What are you doing? But Wes, I've been dieting for like three months. Shut the fuck up. You've been doing it a year? Shut the fuck up. I'll wait till everything's perfect and then I'll start posting. Your motherfucker, fuck you, shut up. The price of procrastination is the life you could have fucking lived. Bitch! Fuck! Fuck! It's cause my childhood trauma and then Shut the fuck up! Shut up! Get to work! I have a headache, I'm tired. I haven't been able to do these things for me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I. You're so worried about you because you're a fucking egomaniac. Fuck. People are living legendary existences. You can't even drop the booze. <laughs> like, smack the shit out of yourself today. Just smack the fuck out of yourself. Literally, I hope this video smacks the fuck out of you. Why are you so negative, Wes? Why are you a pussy? I think it's normal to want to smash someone's face in and be a savage who fucking could. I think it's weird to be positive all the time. I think it's fucking fake. I, I honestly know you could elevate above all your fucking problems. Guess why? Guess why I know? Because I fucking did. You could have action all day, but if you don't have results, you ain't really putting in the intensity, baby bitch. Baby girl. Dude, this guy is impressive. He could kill it. But he's just got a big old stanking wet vagina between his legs. Like, you're sitting here watching me kill it this hard? You don't want a piece? What the fuck? What the fuck? What else would you be doing? Looking at stupid shit? Watching stupid shit? It's okay if you're too big of a bitch to do everything that I suggest. We need fucking losers too. Because my team and all my people... They wouldn't shine as hard if there wasn't chosen fucking losers. Your choice, bitch! Let's Imagine paying close to $3,000 to be told what you just heard. Because that's what he fucking does. That's his motivation. You call him up, you're like, Wes, my life sucks. I'm just trying to make money. I want to I wanna get a car. And he tells you, you're a fucking bitch. You're a pussy. You're a vagina. I'm rich. I'm a motherfucker. I just bought a motherfucking Mercedes Benz from your money. You son of a bitch. You idiots. You fell for my fucking trick. 
This is what I'm trying to warn everybody about. Don't fall for these assholes tricks. There's one complaint that came with a lawsuit and Wes paid it off apparently. That's what I heard. So anyway, he's such a motivator that he told one of his Mexican people, this is a Mexican guy that joined to be, for him to be a life coach. He told this poor Mexican guy, you're never going to get anywhere because you're a sand N-I-G-G-E-R, not even N-I-G-G-A. He called him a sand, sand N-I-G-G-E-R. That E-R and that A, that's a big difference. You can get shot between that E-R and that A. But yeah, he's a racist too. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of racist complaints about this man. I mean, yeah, check this out. This is what he thinks of Mexicans. But they still got that Mexican body, bro. They don't really fucking get in shape. So they, they get distracted way quick. They eat a couple spreads. They look like shit still. It's very <laughs> rare that a Mexican ever looks good in shape. I mean, they just don't. But it's very rare that you're like, look at that jacked ass Mexican. But dude. why Why is that? It's their genetics of eating, of loving their food. Dude, they got the best food on earth. But they still got that Mexican body, bro. They don't really fucking get in shape. So they, they get distracted way quick. They eat a couple spreads. They look like shit still. It's very <laughs> rare that a Mexican ever looks good in shape. I mean, they just don't. But it's very rare that you're like, look at that jacked ass Mexican But dude. why Why is that? It's their genetics of eating, of loving their food. Dude, they got the best food on earth. But I kind of have advice for the Mexican people who might be watching. Don't hire Wes Watson as a life coach. Because not only will he call you a sand N-I-G-G. E -R, like I said, not N-I-G-G-A. But he also thinks that you'll never get in shape and basically you'll always look like a piece of shit. Apparently, this guy, Wes Watson, he got awfully lucky in prison. When you go to prison for a long time, what's one of the biggest things you miss? Sex, right? Well, good old Wes said the only person in life that he's ever found sexy enough and beautiful enough to have sex with is Wes Watson. With that being said, when all the other guys were jerking off the magazines, Wes had a little silver plate that he polished out and he would just stare at himself and punch the midget all fucking day long. A matter of fact, he's planning on showing the world. I don't know how soon I'm going to show the world, but there was one thing that I knew I had to do with my life that was calling me more than anything. And a lot of you motherfuckers give me a lot of, criticize me a lot for this. A lot of people don't understand why I would do this. And it's something that I know in my heart is the most, it's what I want to do most. I'm drawn to doing this more than anything. It's nothing new. You've seen me do it before. You've seen this a part of my life before, but I'm going back to it and giving my all. It's, uh, it's jacking off incessantly. It's nothing new. You've seen me do it before. But I'm going back to it. Uh, it's jacking off incessantly. Apparently, that's the next level of prison YouTubers. If you blow their head up, after they become millionaire life coaches, they just get on YouTube and just start jerking off in front of everybody while they get fucking thumbs up and likes and subscribers and get launched into the fucking millennial. I don't even think millennial is a word. Maybe launched into space? Anyways, so at least fucking Wes Watson is only like this on YouTube. You know, I'm sure in life, he has so many millions that he helps his friends. He does all kinds of good things for charity, right? So I could do shit for the people I love, but I don't like doing anything. With all that being said, let's get back to some more of his bullshit fucking lies. He got caught for this recently. He tried to make up for it. He tried to fucking give a story, but it's fucking bullshit. This guy started telling people that when you go to prison, when he went prison to prison to prison, that he used to take his jacket, meaning his paperwork, and shove it up his ass. So as soon as he got to the next prison, he can pull it out and show everybody because you had to show your paperwork. Well, first of all, I've never heard of anything so disgusting and so not true. Your paperwork's a pretty big piece of paper. I don't know how you get that up your ass. I really don't when your head's up there especially. But in general, why would you do such a thing? Your paperwork is like a day or two behind you. Are you telling me people wanted to kick the shit out of you and didn't buy any of your charges? I hated you so much that you had it. As soon as you walked in the cell, they were like, show your paperwork or we're going to fucking stab you. And you were like, hold on. And you bent down. You stuck your fucking whole hand in your ass. You moved your head out of the way and you pulled out your fucking paperwork. I'm sure they wanted to read that one too, right? But again, this guy tried to defend it. He tried to tell us how he hides his paperwork in his asshole. I don't know. I haven't been to fucking prison as long as him. Maybe I'm wrong, but last time I went away, 
I don't remember. I mean, maybe it happened. Yeah, I don't remember shoving my papers in my asshole. It's weird. Unless you're just one of those guys who everything goes in your pocketbook. You're like, oh, I'm going to a different prison. Let me take my tattoo machine. Let me take my cosmetics. Let me take my bar of soap. Let me take these couple white t-shirts. Oh, I'll bring this lock in case I get in a fight. Oh, let me just bend over, move my head out of the way, and shove all that other shit in my asshole too. Maybe. Maybe that's what happens. That would be a better story than half your other bullshit stories, fucking Wes. And to think of it, if you were the motherfucking shot caller, if you were the guy who people brought up to you and were like, hey, this is the shot caller, Wes. This is Wes. He has the keys for the yard, which never, ever, ever gets said. But if you were that motherfucking guy, like you said, if you ran the wood pile, if you ran that wood pile, motherfucker, this big ass motherfucking tough guy, first off, remember, he was big, but... He wasn't doing that many steroids in prison. He wasn't all that big. Like I said, he got in one fight. He got his fucking ass kicked. But again, back to what I was saying, we got distracted. If you were this big motherfucking shot caller, if you ran the wood pile, if you had the motherfucking keys, if you were that guy, why do you have to put paperwork in your asshole? When you went to the next prison, wouldn't they automatically be like, oh my God, the shot call is here. Oh my God, here, sir, here's the keys to this fucking yard. Because they would know you, right? Because I'm pretty sure anybody who has that much power and is that fucking up in the fucking wood pile, people know who he is. They should be awaiting for you to come. As soon as you walk in your cell, a motherfucker should bring you a bag full of food. As soon as you walk in the cell, a motherfucker shouldn't be like, who are you? Pull your paperwork out of your asshole and display it to me right now. Because even if they did say that, even if that was a thing, if you were a big motherfucking shot caller who fucked everybody up, why would you have to show your paperwork to anybody? Just beat that motherfucker up, right? Bite into him, rip his fucking cheek off. Because you were the fucking toughest, craziest son of a bitch in there, no? How this motherfucker, fucking living juice head fucking monkey man found thousands of people to pay him thousands of dollars a month for him to motivate them by telling them they're fat pieces of shit and lazy and this and that while he sits back fucking shooting needles in his arm, fucking working out all day, fucking cursing at people is beyond me. But this is the world we live in. I told you, it's the upside down world, this prison YouTube shit. Oh, when I told you that there was thousands of complaints against him, that was in the past. There's an even funnier new complaint. Since he has thousands of people now and he's making millions of dollars, true talk, he can't be the person anymore. He can't be the person who picks up the phone for everybody anymore. How many times could you call somebody a fucking skinny Mexican or a fat fucking asshole in one day? It may be like 20 people, but after that, you're done. So, he hired all kinds of people. So, if you now pay thousands of dollars a month to have fucking Wes Watson be a life coach, there's a 98% chance when you call, you're actually going to speak to some little fucking twerp who fucking couldn't get a job, who was beat up in school, fucking never graduated. Wes decided to pay him fucking $2 an hour to answer the phone, and he basically has a list in front of him of all Wes Watson quotes, and he pushes a button to get him. So you're li that's who you're talking to. When you say, Wes, what should I do? This little fucking douchebag who's making minimum wage and fucking two seconds away from deleting himself looks at the list. Wes, the question is, what should I do? Button number seven. Hits button number seven, and it's Wes Watson's voice going, Get up, you fucking pussy. Grow a set of balls. Shoot steroids. That's what happens. You don't even talk to the guy anymore, and he's making millions. And people are paying thousands of dollars a month to talk to some jerk-off that Wes Watson hired for minimum wage. That's what they're doing. Thousands of dollars a month, people. He promises you, you'll make six figures in three months. How? How is somebody telling you you're a fucking fat piece of shit or telling you you sleep too much or telling you you're a dirtbag going to motivate you to make six figures in three months? If there's a way to do that, I'm into it. Because I would love to just be able to tell people they're fucking jerk-offs all day long and make millions for it. That would be fucking great. But I don't think it works. I actually hope he gets in trouble. And I don't wish that for nobody. I mean, I don't want him to get a long time, maybe like a one-year sentence. Just because I would think it's hysterical to see this fucking juice monster, this veiny fucking water-filled muscle fucking monkey gorilla fucking screaming ball of testosterone who has estrogen running through his body and nuts on his chin and he, the boils on his back and his hairlines running away. <clears throat> I would love to see what happens to him when he can't be on testosterone anymore. 
I would love to see this fucking gorilla after three months when the fucking the estrogen hits. When he's talking like this and uh, he's all sensitive and he's fucking crying and he's getting skinny. And now he just has varicose veins on his chest and he starts to sound like this. What the fuck is the matter with you? What are you doing? how that fucking jerk off's gonna sound when he fucking the estrogen hits and the fucking testosterone wears off so do me a favor folks back to jay williams stop blowing smoke at his ass stop fucking telling him he's the man and we believe him we know he pulled the gun on his fucking wife that's what happened that's my belief again i'm saying that's my opinion i have to say that because people want to try to sue me but anyway that's my opinion but no matter what happened even if that didn't happen he did something to his wife He's not a good guy. Look at his lives. He's a drug addict. I mean, there's plenty of good guys who are drug addicts. I was a drug addict. But he don't admit to shit because he's starting to turn into a fucking Wes. His head is getting so big that he convinces himself that he can't do anything bad. Either that or he knows he is, but he just thinks the whole world is fucking stupid. Because you've been listening to his fucking stories for over a year now. He's been getting them worse and worse. He's been lying, telling other people's stories. That guy can tell you anything. That guy can tell you he shit a golden egg this morning and you guys would be like, you should bring it to the fucking place, Jay. You should have it weighed. Maybe you can sell it. Gold is up right now. Stop doing it because then you get a Wes Watson. But unlike fucking Jay, Wes Watson actually has robbed people of millions and millions of dollars. He lies about fucking everything. He even lies about going to jail for 10 years. He lies about being a shot caller in prison. All this stuff has been exposed. All of it. You would think there'd be a couple people who are really, really happy and satisfied with their life coaching. Maybe there is. I mean, he has like 10 before and after stories. Oh, those before and after stories are always the same fucking people, but nobody can actually get them for an interview. They don't really exist, so to speak. There's one guy who's like, I spoke to Wes Watson for three months and I made $150,000. You tell me how you made $150,000 by being called a fat piece of shit or a skinny Mexican N-I-G-G-E-R, not N-I-G-G-A. Tell me. Tell me how that happens. You know who made that money? He did. He did. He made $3,000 from calling you a fat dick. I guess he's winning, right? But yeah, I've been warning everybody. Do Jay a favor. Do all these prison YouTubers a favor. You can watch them. They're entertaining. But understand, it's entertaining like watching a fucking sitcom. Everything you're watching is fake. Don't support these guys. Don't keep pushing them. When they become a life coach, don't fucking join them. Look at Dubs. If you don't know who Dubs is, look him up. He's a fucking prison YouTuber who never went to prison. That's who he is. A prison YouTuber who never went to prison. He records 24 hours a day of his life, screaming at his wife, screaming at his kids. YouTubers are after him. He fucking, he claims he's a chess master. He claims he's fucking the King Welder. He claims he was an all-star athlete. He was none of these things. And he called Wes and tried to get Wes to be his life coach. And Wes screwed him over too. Just cursed him and called him a fat fucking asshole. But this guy is, has so many people convinced that he's actually getting prison YouTubers to believe in him. That's a whole nother level of fucking bullshit. But anyway, maybe we'll bring him up again. There is so much to talk about this guy. But do Jay Williams a favor. Don't allow him to become a Wes Watson. 
Just because Wes Watson has a lot of money doesn't mean he's a good man. He's still a piece of fucking shit. If anything, he's an even bigger piece of shit. That's my feelings. That's my opinions. Let me know what you think. And if you agree with me, do me a favor. I never asked for this, but share this one. Because the more you share and the more you comment, the more it's going to get out there. And maybe some poor sap somewhere who's thinking about hiring this fucking jerk off will see my video and save his $3,000. He can use that $3,000 to go on a diet. He can use that $3,000 to fucking get a side job. He can use that $3,000 for a whole lot of things. Maybe for his kids. Maybe for who knows. And it will actually advance him in life. But I promise you, if you use that $3,000 to hire him as a life coach, all you're going to do is go to bed feeling like a piece of shit after his employee, who's fucking worse off in life than you, hits a button and it calls you a fucking piece of shit. All right, people? New York here. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the week. And I'll catch you on the next one.